my heavens. <laughs> this is my great honor. Once a year, I get to present an honorary diploma. It's just one of the great joys of my life. I get to um, honor uh, someone that meant a lot to the school and um, who would not normally maybe get honored. Um, and so today I want to honor um, a man that uh, has been very close to the school for 12 years. He has a BS in mathematics and computer science from University of Pittsburgh, an MS in computer science from John Hopkins, and a Master's of Divinity from Fort Wayne Theological Seminary. He is a software engineer uh, at Minitab, one of the um, most advanced companies in our, in our community. And he's also a pastor of two churches and is one of the most active pastors I know. And he's only half the equation. So often we um, honor the husband when there's definitely a package here. Stacy Spang um, is got her uh, associate's degree in dental hygiene from Allegheny College in Cumberland. They have four kids that are four of the finest kids I know. And, you know, I judge, well, I don't judge, but it tells me a lot about a parent when I see their kids, when I see the kids that they have, because kids don't um, just get great by accident. This family inspires me. My own friends and family probably get tired of me constantly talking about Brian Spang and Stacy. I was reading um, something he sent me a few years ago. It says, the church is not so much an institution as it is a movement. It is a glorious mess of people who have been messed up by encountering Jesus and are willing to wade into the brokenness of people's lives, reflecting the grace and truth of Jesus Christ. It is not for the faint of heart, but is what the church has been called to do. And I've seen Brian and Stacy be leaders spiritually. They come to work, they come to pray, um, they are totally servants of us and of this community. They've had four kids come through here. This is their fifth graduation. Last night was their fifth senior cruise. They've been, the only person that's been associated with school with the kids more than I is uh, Brian and Stacy. They've had a student here, been involved with that for 11 to 12 years. They have paid 16 years of tuition which is so near and dear to my heart. <laughs> that, by the way, is a record. It's more than any human has paid in Grace Prep, Grace Prep history. With every $100,000 of tuition comes a free honorary diploma. <laughs> to me, Brian and Stacy have been true friends. They've been there in my ups and my downs. Um, they're people I go to and I have questions, and I just absolutely love them. They have meant the world to Grace Prep. I consider them co-founders. They've been there for us at every step of the way. And today, I'm really honored to give um, a Grace Prep honorary diploma to Brian and Stacy Spang. I just uh, wanted to briefly just say um, it's really been our privilege, uh, and I'm so thankful to Bob and Dan for founding the school and uh, the privilege of having our children be a part of this. And we are very, very committed to Christian education. Uh, it's not an easy uh, road for our children today in our society. And uh, this is part of the equation that really, really needs to be here in this community. And we are blessed in this community to have a school like Grace Prep and what God placed on uh, Bob and Dana's hearts uh, to found this 
and to, to start this and to persevere in this because it's not easy and there's a lot of sacrifice in that. So I want to thank you and I, and I just remember, um, you know, as, as Bob was saying, don't be afraid and I was thinking of, of Joshua when he was heading into the promised land and if you look at Joshua chapter 1, I encourage you to do that when you go home, all of the students, uh, where it says over and over again, the Lord says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Thank you so much. This is a great, great honor. All right, it's time. Um, class of 2016, would you please present yourself across the full breadth of the front of the auditorium, giving yourself lots of space between each other and face me. Um, in the very first year that we graduated a class, that those students and those parents established a very special tradition for us. And that tradition is this. Before we present diplomas, which we think are of great worth, we present something that we think is of great worth. And that is a spiritual blessing in the form of a prayer. And so I invite the parents and grandparents to come and lay their hands upon their students. And um, after the parents and grandparents have, go ahead, you can come now. After the parents and grandparents have had the opportunity to get first dibs, then we invite any of the rest of you to come and join a student that you love dearly. Students, would you just turn around and face me? I want to see your beautiful eyes one last time as I share where we're headed with your blessing tonight. So, um, we're told in scripture that we're to pray in the spirit, but there's a lot of controversy about what that looks like. I know one thing that it looks like very clearly because it's written in black and white ink in the book of Romans. It says that when we pray in the spirit, that we cry, we have a guttural pleading, and we say the specific words, Abba, Father. Now those are the words that Christ spoke on the cross. And we are instructed to pray as he did in his hour of great need. And so I want to explain to you, you know, in the scripture, or, or in the church, we have this tradition of understanding that when we hear Abba, it means Daddy. And that is incorrect. The language in that passage, in its original form, does not speak of a word that a 5-year-old or a 10-year-old or a 15-year-old, or I still call my dad Daddy, and I'm not going to tell you how old I am, would use. In fact... The etymology of the word is such that it is something an infant would speak. It would be more accurately translated dada. And so I want you to look, many of you are standing next to your earthly father right now. Some of you um, aren't next to him because of a distance or other reasons, but most of you are right next to him. So go ahead and look at your dad. And I bet you that your dad there was a day when you looked at him and communicated with a word before you knew the word dada. It was wah, wah. <laughs> and I bet when you uttered those words, your father knew exactly what to do. He handed you to his mo your, your mother. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I do want to have a conversation with God about why the first words they say are dada. But my point is this. Your mother and your father knew your need when all you could say was wah. Do you think that your Father God cannot know your need if you came to him with a simple data? And so my prayer is this, that you would pray in the Spirit one day in a place of desperation like Christ did on the cross and like I have in recent days and years where I don't have the intellect of my faith to explain the circumstance I find myself in. And so all I can do is cry, Dad, and ask him to sort it out. Because when you get to that place, you're going to know who he really is. And you will have prayed in the Spirit, authentically, in a way that you never will before or again. Would you bow your heads as I bless you with a passage this year, selected from the book of Romans, chapter 8. So then, class of 2016, we, along with you, are in great debt 
if we live according to our flesh. And if we live according to our flesh, we, we are going to die. If, we live, if you live according to your own plans, you will not succeed. But if you live by the Spirit and put to death the deeds of your own will, you will thrive. For every one of you that's led by the Spirit of God will prove yourself to be a true son or daughter. Be led by him. During your years here at Grace Prep, we did not introduce you to a spirit of slavery that would cause you to live in fear for the rest of your life. But we have encouraged you to accept the spirit of adoption so that as sons and daughters, you would pray in the spirit a guttural pleading, Dada. Brittany, you are bravery. If God is for you, no one will be against you, including your own mind. Set your mind on him, fix your mind on him, and he promises you life and peace. Daniel, you are fearless passion. I encourage you to begin fearing but fear nothing but God. Yet fear him nonetheless. There is powerlessness in your flesh and plans, but strength in his spirit. George, you are confidence. Place that in Christ, and you will conquer everything he calls you to do by his will. Naya. You are gentle with beauty and truth. You are truth and trust in transition. Nothing can separate you from God's love, not trouble or hardship. Reach into his love, and you will find everything you need for your truth to bring you peace. Hey, God, you are certainly strong will, but there is gentleness in that strength. I have seen it. I pray that you would find your true power in Christ and that as you use your strength, you would use it to submit to his will. David, you are God's glory. It has been prophesied over you. The Spirit has set you free from the law of sin and death, and I would pray that you would let others see your freedom so that they would see him. <coughs> Stephen, you are not the last, but the leader. Follow yours. If you follow Christ as a leader, if you follow the Spirit, you will prove that those who are led by the Spirit are his sons, and others will follow you. Emma, you are beautiful vision. You see what others miss, the needs, the weaknesses, and the potential. You see that the Spirit helps in weakness. I pray that you would use your vision to be an interceptor like one another. Eric, you are certain. May God's Spirit graciously give you all things to serve, and may you take time now and then to be served. Lee, you are dynamic energy. Reject every spirit that puts that energy in bondage and receive the spirit of God whose sonship is yours. Rebecca, you are love for the gospel. You can do this. This gives me such hope. The word says that it is hope, by hope that we are saved. I pray that you cause men to hope and what they cannot see, because they see the hope in you. Maya, as Bob said last night, you are depth bursting up. Take others with you on those bursts, down to the deep places, where the deep of God calls to the deep in you. Haley, you are great, and you are graceful. But a blow that must be to the end, as he sought to steal that from you. 
The suffering you have faced and the suffering you will face is not worth comparing to the sharing of his glory. You have shown that to us tonight. Come, you are God's voice. You are becoming a greater voice. Let it be controlled by the fear of spirit so that you are pleasing to him. Johnny, you are solid reliability. Use it to the point. Use it to point to the reliable, everlasting love of God. Now, class of 2016, we proclaim that you will go, and that in all the things that you do, you will know that you are more than conquerors through Christ, because he loves you. In the name of Jesus, we all say. Amen. All right, hug your mom, hug your dad.